Our last speaker is Dr. Pern Jan Che Cho Sak. She is a professor of medicine, division of Fijia Disease, Department of Medicine, Kangan University. She, she has been involved in caring, uh, caring of HIV infected patients in Thailand since the beginning of the epidemic. She is one of the Thai Society Committee who developed Thai TB. At the Thai ART guideline. So today she is going to update management of prevention and treating cryptococcal disease. Please welcome Dr. Pernzan. Thank you very much for your kind introduction and thank you the organizing committee for inviting me to talk about the cryptococcal disease, which is uh, different from the previous speakers. Uh, cryptococcal disease is still the problem uh, in there are over 100,000 cases cryptococcal disease in the world but you know mostly in Africa however in in Thailand and also in the Asia region I think it's still the problem because in Thailand it is the third most common opportunistic infection my ally today will be on the prevention of cryptococcosis, treatment of cryptococcal meningitis, and for antifungal treatment or adjuvant treatment. And the last one is the timing of antiretroviral treatment. For prevention of cryptococcosis, you, you can see here, this is a, a Cochrane database. Uh, study show that cryptococcal disease in primary prophylaxis, all of the studies show that given fluconazole or other uh, antifungal can prevent uh, cryptococcosis. However, for the all-cause mortality, you can see here, there is no uh, benefit on the mortality. So the WHO guideline, uh, what we recommend on the uh, prevention of cryptococcal uh, disease, they said that in the patient who have the CD4 less than 100 cell, should screening for cryptococcal antigen prior to antiretroviral treatment. So we emphasize on the screening of the disease other than prevention. And if it's screening positive, after you ruling out uh, cryptococcal meningitis, uh, you should give the patient preemptive antiretro, uh, antifungal therapy, fulconazone 800 milligram per day, and then followed by consolidation and maintenance treatment. This approach is preferred over fulconazone primary prophylaxis. However, uh, if the setting that limited of uh, cryptococcal antigen testing and uh, delay in the result of the cryptococcal uh, antigen result, fulconazone may be, should be made available. So this is a message from uh, the guideline of the cryptococcosis. For the treatment of cryptococcosis, several years ago, you also know about this study, the treatment of cryptococcal meningitis uh, into almost 300 cases. They randomized to three arm, m 4 b 1 milligram per kilo alone, m 4 b with five full cytosine, and m 4 b with fulconazone 800 milligram. From this study, the primary outcome is uh, day 14 and day 70 uh, in the mortality rate. You can see here, this is the number uh, of death in, in this. This is the probability of the survival. There was no significant uh, among three arms. However, in the day 70, uh, when they compare group one m 4 b alone with m 4 b with full cytosine, that is statistical significant. You can see from this Kaplan-Meier curve, 
and for tyrosine B, vitrocytosine did uh, the best, and M4 tyrosine B is the worst, and M4 tyrosine B plus fluconazole is in between. And if you look at the fungal clearance uh, in these three groups, when you compare group one, M4 tyrosine B alone with M4 tyrosine B with fluconazole, Full cytosine has uh, higher fungal clear, clearance and also significant between M4 tyrosine B uh, with fulconazone also. So you know that the treatment, the standard treatment is uh, M4 tyrosine B with full cytosine for two weeks. That is the induction. However, with this study, the antifungal combination for treatment of cryptococcal meningitis in Africa, or ACTA tri, that uh, published in 2018, they randomized the patient into the three, three major groups. The first one is the oral uh, regimen, two weeks of fluconazone, 1,200 milligram plus full cytosine, 100 milligram per kilo per day. And then the second group is the one week of M4 tyrosine B. And the three group is the two M4 tyrosine B, two weeks of M4 tyrosine B. And in the M4 tyrosine B, they also uh, further randomized to receive uh, five FC of full cytosine or full conazone. So there is a total of five arms. In the patient who received one week of M4 tyrosine B, followed by fulconazone 1200 milligram for, uh, for one week. This is the largest uh, randomized control trial of cryptococcal meningitis that uh, done before. The patient received uh, uh, consolidation treatment with fulconazone 800 milligram and maintenance with uh, 200 milligram of fulconazone. The ART start at the week four. This is the uh, mortality rate among the three groups. You can see that they are comparable in the three arm. So no statistical significance between the three arm. But if you divide it into the fifth arms, you can see here that M4 tyrosine B with uh, plus full cytosine for one week has the lowest mortality. And then followed by the uh, full conazone with full cytosine, the oral regimen. When you compare full cytosine and full conazone uh, group, you can see that mortality rate is uh, higher in the full conazone group as compared to full cytosine. And in this study, the side effect is less in the oral regimen, especially anemia. And in the one week, M4 tyrosine B anemia also less than the two weeks. And you know, uh, the patient admit into the hospital just only one week, so it's more easy uh, to take care of the patient, okay? Uh, now we look at the, uh, we, we know that liposomal M4 tyrosine B uh, also effective for the treatment. This is a randomized control trial in 267 patients. They are randomized to three arms. The first arm, the first group is M4 tyrosine B deoxycholate, uh, 0.7 milligram per day alone. And the second group is the uh, uh, liposomal M4 tyrosine B with the low dose, uh, standard dose, three milligram per kilo, and the high dose, six milligram per kilo. You can see here the clinical success at week two and week 10 they are comparable, no significant difference between the three arms, and the survival rate also the same. 
So in this study, we show that it's not necessary to use the higher dose of uh, liposomal amphotericin B. And as you expected, the infusion-related reaction is more common in the amphotericin B deoxycholate as compared to these two arms. So we know that uh, liposomal amphotericin B can be used at the standard dose. Now we look at any other new strategy of uh, using of uh, liposomal amphotericin B. Last year, there is a, a phase two randomized control trial to look at the short cost of high dose uh, liposomal amphotericin B. So HIV patient with uh, cryptococcal uh, meningitis receive fluconazole for 14 days, randomized to receive either uh, standard liposomal amphotericin B, three milligram per kilo per day for two weeks. And then uh, high dose of liposomal amphotericin B, 10 milligram per kilo, but given just only single dose on day one. And uh, the third group is the liposomal amphotericin B, 10 milligram per kilo on day one, and five milligram per kilo on day three, two doses. And the last one is the 10 milligram on day one and five milligram per kilo on day three and day seven, so three doses. Since it is just only the uh, phase two study, they look at the uh, CSF sterilization. You can see from here, there is no difference uh, in among these slightly in each arm. So they choose the single dose, 10 milligram per kilo per day, single dose to, into the uh, phase three study. So we have to wait for this result, it might be easier because you give the patient just only one day. Now i like to ask you, from the study that I show you, what is the uh, 2018 WHO recommended uh, induction treatment for cryptococcal meningitis? A is m 4 B alone for two weeks, B, M4 with full cytosine for two weeks, C, M4 tyrosine B with full conazone for two weeks, D, M4 tyrosine B with full cytosine just one week followed by full conazone, and E, full conazone uh, high dose with full cytosine for two weeks, please vote. Okay, there is uh, the most common one is the D and followed by B. B is M4 with full cytosine for two weeks. Okay, so this is the WHO guideline for the treatment. Just only one week of M4 tyrosine B deoxycholate one milligram per kilo per day with full cytosine, and then followed by full conazone, 1,200 milligram per day. And alternative option is two weeks of full conazone high dose with full cytosine, or two weeks of m 4 B with full conazone. Okay. For the consolidation, uh, Treatment is fluconazole 800 milligram for adult. For maintenance, treatment is fluconazole 200 milligram uh, per kilo. Uh, no, not per kilo, per day. This is a summarize of the preferred regimen uh, of the WHO. First week, m 4 B with 5 uh, FC or full cytosine. And then second week with the high dose of fluconazole. 
and then followed by consolidation, 800 milligram, and then maintenance treatment until the patient adhere to antiretroviral and virus suppress CD4 over 100. You can stop the maintenance treatment. And alternative is a uh, full cytosine with high dose fluconazole or amphotericin B with high dose fluconazole. Uh, you can see that in this uh, induction, they use a high dose of fluconazole. Now, we go to the CDC or IDSA recommendation for induction of cryptococcal meningitis. What is the recommendation? A, amphotericin B with full cytosine for two weeks. B, liposomal amphotericin B, three milligram per kilo with full cytosine. C is the five milligram per kilo with full cytosine. D is A and B. E is A and C. Please vote. Okay, so you mostly get the uh, D answer. This is the CDC IDSA guideline. Liposomal amphotericin B, three to four milligram per kilo, plus full cytosine, uh, 25, but QID, that is uh, 100 milligram per day, the same dose. And, uh, you can choose the uh, amphotericin B deoxychlorate, uh, 0.7 to 1 milligram per kilo, plus full cytosine. So there are two options for uh, induction in uh, CDC and IDSA guideline. This is an alternative uh, regimen for CDC. There are many amphotericin B uh, high dose or liposomal M4 B with fluconazole, M4 B deoxychlorate plus fluconazole. But you can see that here, the dose is just only 800 milligram. Liposomal M4 B alone, M4 uh, B deoxychlorate alone, or fluconazole, just 400 milligram uh, daily with uh, full cytosine and full cornerstone, 800 milligram per day. If you look at the consolidation phase, the full cornerstone is only 400 milligram. So this is different from the WHO guideline, okay? And also have an alternative regimen, atra cornerstone, 200 milligram BID and uh, maintenance is the same, fulconazone 200 milligram per day. Now we look at the adjuvant uh, therapy of cryptococcal meningitis. Uh, this study randomized the patient with the uh, HIV positive with cryptococcal meningitis from Asia and Africa, 451 cases to uh, receive uh, adjuvant therapy with dexamethasone for six weeks. They have a, a tapering dose uh, for six weeks and receive placebo. Primary outcome of this study is 10 week survival in intention to treat, and the secondary outcome is survival in six months and the disability at uh, 10 weeks and six months and the decrease of cryptococcal cow in the CSF and change in the uh, CSF pressure. In this study, the primary outcome, death or mortality, you can see here dexamethasone 47% as compared to 41%, there is no statistical significant. However, if you look at disability at week 10, 
for the good outcome. Placebo did better than dexamethasone. And also the CSF clearance of the fungus is lower in dexamethasone groups, statistical significant. So this is a Kaplan-Meier curve. You can see that placebo did better, but it's not statistical significant. If you look at the adverse event, you can see here infection or infestation is more common in dexamethasone group. Gastrointestinal disorder is more common. Renal or urinary uh, disorder also more common. Cardiac disorder also more common. For adjuvant uh, use of steroid is not recommended, okay? For another adjuvant uh, therapy, sertraline, which is an antidepressant, uh, in the in vitro, in vitro study and also phase two, show the promising data that uh, sertraline might be uh, adjuvant therapy to the cryptococcal meningitis. So they did the uh, phase three study in HIV positive patient with cryptococcal meningitis. They randomized to receive sertraline or placebo arm. And you can see uh, this is a dose of sertraline. The primary outcome is the 18 week survival in intention to treat, and secondary outcome is the cryptococcal clearance in the CSF. They plan to enroll 550 participants. However, at this point, the trial was stopped for futurity because there is no significant difference in the mortality between the two arms. And also the secondary outcome, there is no significant difference in, there is a lower uh, crypto eyelids, 3% and 6%, but this is not uh, statistical significant. The last one is about the timing of antiretroviral treatment in cryptococcal meningitis. This study uh, randomized patients who are cryptococcal meningitis for the first episode. They entry into the study between seven to 11 days after receive initial antifungal therapy. They randomized to two groups. The early initiation start antiretroviral within 48 hours after study entry before discharge, and the deferred arm is wait until the uh, four weeks after study entry, after the uh, hospital discharge. From this study, you can see here the deferred arm has better survival than the early antiretroviral treatment. So. This is uh, different from other opportunistic infection, like TB or PCP or other opportunistic infection. You have to treat the patient early after you treat opportunistic infection. But for cryptococcal meningitis, you have to wait until four to six weeks. And this uh, also for all patients and the six month mortality or prefer defer ART. And this is a, a timing for antiretroviral uh, initiation immediate. It's not recommended, should be deferred until four to six weeks. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Pen Chan. Any questions or comments? Okay, we have one question over there. Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Lin from Myanmar. So I'm uh, always confused about the uh, duration of the preemptive antifungal treatment of um, these patients. So as WHO stated that it is the same with uh, uh, 
cryptococcal meningitis treatment. So that's at least one year. So two weeks of injection, eight weeks of uh, consolidation, and, and at least one year of maintenance. So <clears throat> I personally feel that uh, this uh, regimen is very difficult uh, to convince the clinicians as well as the patient to complete uh, such a um, uh, long course of therapy. So I, I would like to know that in your center, do you, rea do you uh, practice this uh, uh, WHO guideline? And if so, uh, I would like to know what percentage of patient they can complete this uh, long preemptive therapy? That is my, my first question. And uh, second is that uh, the whole day today, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, for the TB prevent preventive therapy, we are moving to the uh, shorter causes. So likewise, in this uh, cryptococcal field, uh, is there any prospect of any uh, shorter preemptive uh, therapy ongoing as, uh, as new studies. Thank you. Okay, the first one, I think in our setting, we also uh, follow, by, follow the WHO guideline. But as you say, that might be difficult for some patient, but we try to persuade them that this is a serious infection. If you do not uh, treat properly, you might get the cryptococcal meningitis, okay? For the second, I, I didn't see any preemptive, shorter duration of the preemptive uh, treatment for this group of patients. Okay, thank you, Dr. Pernjan, for your excellent talk. 